Hey guys, this is Dorian Day and welcome to Massive In Depth number 5. Today we're going to be talking about Massive's filter section. Here's some info about the filters from the manual. Massive has two separate filters that can be routed in serial or parallel. You can insert one filter of any available type in each bus by selecting an entry from the filter drop-down menu, like you can see here. The filter section is one of Massive's most important sound design feature, and is the principal means by which you can sculpt the sound. Although of course the wavetable engine that produces the raw signal is also very important for the final sonic impression, it is the filters that often give a synthesizer its distinct sound. When programming new sounds with Massive, the creative potentials of the filter section should never be ignored. We've already talked about the filter mix sliders in the last video on the oscillators. So we know how to set those. Um, on the left of the filter section, you can see the serial parallel uh, slider. In serial mode, the sound enters the top filter and passes through and enters the bottom filter and then exits. In parallel mode, the amount of uh, oscillator entering the filter is determined by the oscillator mix sliders right here. Note that if you're in full parallel mode and you have an oscillator with its filter slider all the way down, no audio will enter the filter from that oscillator. You can see here. So serial mode, go down to two, and slide this down. So when you're in serial mode, all audio has to enter filter one. On the right side of the filter section is the mix slider. Uh, this mixes the output of the two filters. So note that this takes the audio directly out of the individual filters regardless of your serial parallel uh, settings. Uh, so it comes out of here and it comes out of here no matter what this setting is. Um, however, if this setting determines whether there's, any, whether there's any audio into. So um, this is just the final mix. All of these things, uh, all these sliders are important in determining how much volume is going to finally get out of each one of these filters and then you can mix them. Um, finally we come to the heart of the filter, uh, the selection menu and control knobs. If you click the menu you'll notice 11 filter types. Um, you have normal, pa uh, normal low pass, high pass filters, uh, band pass and band reject. The all pass filter which functions similar to a phaser and sounds like a mix between a phaser and a peak filter but there's only um, one peak. In fact, uh, the way a phaser is constructed is by a bank of all-pass filters. You have like eight of them. It's however many stages you have is how many all-pass fil filters you have. So this is like having a single stage of a phaser. Um, and it sounds kind of like um, phasing. It sounds like the, a mixture between a peak filter and like a rejection filter. Uh, that's the best way I can describe it. Um, there is a double notch filter, which is basically two of these. Um, this simulates the phaser sound really well. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I suspect that this was Zed's best friend on a lot of tracks, but definitely not his signature basses. Mostly the old stuff. Um... Next you have the scream filter. The scream filter is a low pass filter with additional internal feedback added. Um, the scream parameter controls the amount of feedback. Like if we go to a sign, you can see this. I mean, already you can see it adding the harmonics but when I turn it on as compared to just a normal low pass, which, okay, I guess also has that. So yeah, so as soon as you start adding these like analog components, you start seeing this uh, um, slight feedback, which gives you a, or saturation. I'm not sure if it's feedback or saturation, um, probably saturation considering we discussed how the amps derive. But at any rate, the filters definitely emphasize um, whatever low-level harmonics the sine wave has. 
So going back to the scream. You can sort of see uh, and hear where the feedback is coming in. Um, daft is another kind of low pass filter. The manual describes it as being very resp responsive to filter frequency modulation with the modulation oscillator. So let's try that out. Let's try just a normal low pass. Back to the daft. Back to the cutoff, or a low pass. Yeah. I don't know about that. Some of the things that the manual says about massive are kind of pretty weak statements. Um, comb filtering. It's a comb filter with internal low pass dampening of the feedback path so that you don't get craziness or too much craziness. Sounds similar to flanging and has pitch control. can create a lot of cool sounds. Um, finally, we have an acid filter. I actually don't remember reading about that in the manual. What's going on with that? Comb, low pass. Really? the word acid is not in the massive manual at all. So maybe it was added in uh, in a different version and this is, they never updated the manual. I don't know, but so acid. Well, that's probably talking about the TB303. TB303 was special because it had um, basically the interaction of the resonance on the filter with its post saturation created that gnarly growling sound. So that's my guess is that this is a filter with um, some kind of high quality resonance, perhaps analog modeling resonance, and then some kind of post saturation. Uh, we can try to envelope it like the TB303 was. Okay, good. I turned off the modulation. What do you know? It's a uh, resonance with slight saturation after it. And you can add clipping and that'll should um, reinforce that sound. Honestly, a uh, massive clipper is pretty hit or miss, but it's probably because I'm on a square wave, like an idiot.
So you can see what the clipping does after the acid filter. And I should clarify what I mean by like an idiot because that may not be such a nice thing to say because maybe someone else had it set on square. And um, more importantly, the TB303 allowed you to switch between saw waves and square waves. However, Massive's clipping distortion, um, I don't, I don't, I'm not even sure if it's a um, true clipping algorithm as much as if it just make tries to turn the wave tables or waveforms into square waves um there's a subtle distinction in that in that most i would assume that most clipping is done by modeling some kind of analog component or just doing 100 percent digital clipping uh but you don't get that 100 percent digital clipping sound so i'm guessing it's some type type of wave table magic so it starts turning it into a square well, if you're already on, a already on a square, it doesn't really doesn't do anything. I can show you. Listen to square. All right, turn on clipping. I mean, it does like nothing to the sound. And if I turn this to a saw wave, So saw wave, full clipping, no square wave, no, cli no clipping, wait, oh, they're both saws, okay. Uh, they're pretty similar. <clears throat> I tried EQing them, you can get pretty close, so you can sort of, you can sort of uh, mimic each of them. Not, not gonna try and go through that. But the uh, takeaway here is that Massive's Clipper doesn't do anything on its on square waves. And it probably shouldn't if you think about it, but um, you know, I mean, if you run a square wave through another kind of clipper, usually you'll get just um, more noise, but whatever algorithm they have going on is trying to protect you from that, I think. Um, so finally, the, fil the manual states that all the filters except the bandpass are very sensitive regarding their input level. Honestly, I, I cannot tell that. Um, I haven't really noticed that the filter uh, the filters um, responding to volume. I don't know. I guess I'm just not advanced enough at it, but I've tried. I've noticed it in other synthesizers really well, but uh, not so much. Like maybe with clip, we'll try one experiment. So. So we have a saw. We have a saw wave. Let's put a band pass on it. So without clipping, it sounds like this. Now let's lower the volume of the oscillator. Okay, so here you can see it. I don't really know how to describe what's going on in this situation here, but you can see that this is almost at the bottom, but it's still really loud and you can hear all the volume. And the tone doesn't change as I slide this. Okay, I'm a liar, it does. Yeah, once again, uh, you can sort of see how turning the knob changes how much distortion there is, but I'm not sure if this is uh, a result of the bandpass filter or the clipper or what. Maybe this is a good example. So, I don't know. Volume matters, I guess that's the point here. Volume matters. Um, I guess that's what they're describing. I always thought it was the distortion, perhaps it's the filters. Um, so, yeah, just to finish out, yeah, like honestly, I think the manual is exaggerating a little bit about everything, but um, you can find it, these things that they're talking about if you're clever. Um, 
if you go into silent or strobe, like I was saying before, uh, this this um this seems much more apparent to me. The imp uh, impact of volume on the filters and the overall sound and distortion, but I might just not be thinking or assessing it this uh massive correctly. It might be too obvious in the other synthesizers. Might maybe this is just subtle. Um. Yeah, so this uh, this brings us to the end of Massive In-Depth number five. Thanks for watching.